Hello, I'm Mr. Carr and welcome to GCSE History. We've got three things to talk about today to help you decide whether GCSE History is right for you. First of all, what you would study if you chose GCSE History. Secondly, why it would be useful to you and why it matters today. The first thing that you would study in Year 10 would be Weimar and Nazi Germany between 1918 and 1939. So that covers from the end of the First World War uh, and how Germany uh, ultimately lost that war and was punished by the victorious allies for that and then how Germany suffered in the 1920s um, but ultimately recovered under politicians like Gustav Stresemann um, and then ultimately for that recovery to be undone by events like the Wall Street crash and we look at the Nazis during this period how they went from being a very small very minor party that nobody was really taking very seriously to start to win over some support from the German people and ultimately to convince a very large number of Germans that they should support the Nazis and then for those who didn't support the Nazis, how they forced them to support. We'll also talk about how Hitler managed to establish a dictatorship, uh, how he managed to manipulate government and change the laws so that he had total power. We'll then talk about what life was like in Nazi Germany, how the Nazis held on to power by using things like the police, uh, propaganda and indoctrination, and what life was like for people who lived in Germany. So we'll talk about the youth, we'll talk about uh, experiences for women, uh, and we'll talk about uh, the economy, living standards. Was life better off for people in Nazi Germany? The second topic that we'll go on to study will be medicine uh, from about the year 1250 to the present day, so roughly 750 years of history. And whereas Germany is a depth study and we focus lots on uh, detail, this is a breadth study, so we look at lots of events very quickly and we try to cover a big period of time and make comparisons between things. So we would compare, for example, medieval surgery with 21st century surgery and talk about, well, where has all that extra understanding come from? How has the technology improved? And why was surgery such a horrible experience in the medieval period? And today is relatively safe and um, very advanced and can cure lots of things. We'll talk about public health, we'll talk about disease, what people understood about that, uh, things like germ theory. And the idea of this is that we're really looking at how the world came to be like it is. Um, so really moving from a medieval through an early modern where people began to start questioning evidence into the industrial period with the origins of science, uh, things like germ theory, big cities starting to develop and government starting to take seriously its responsibility for public health and then into the modern period where medicine is very much led by science. The third thing that we'll study uh, in year 11 will be the American West from 1835 to 1895. And in that period of time, we're studying why uh, or how life in America was uh, for Native Americans before white settlers arrived. And then once white European settlers are in America, how and why they spread west to take over more and more of the country. Um, we'll look at the experience of some of the people who moved west, why they did that, maybe for religious persecution, maybe because they believed there was a better life the further west they went until eventually they got to California. We'll look at uh, the lawlessness of the Wild West. We'll look at how it was difficult for sheriffs and marshals to enforce law and order. Uh, and we'll look at the cowboys and look into their lives and how the cattle industry became so important in America. Ultimately, through that course, what we're really looking at is the experiences of Americans um, and how their country became the way it is today. The fourth and final topic that we study is early Elizabethan England towards the end of year 11. And in that part of the course, you're studying, of course, Queen Elizabeth and we'll study what problems she had when she became queen. She had quite a difficult time because she's a woman in what is very much a man's world, because her finances were a little bit difficult and because lots of people questioned whether it really was okay for her to be queen, uh, since she was the daughter of uh, a, a mother who had been executed for treason. We will look at some of the threats that she faced from uh, well, particularly religious threats. She was a Protestant um, and wanted to make England Protestant, while the rest of Europe was still quite strongly Catholic. We'll look at how that caused tensions in her own country and how she tried to solve that with what she called the religious, or we call the religious settlement. Um, how relations with countries like Spain went, and ultimately England and Spain went to, to war. And we'll also look not just at the people at the very top, 
people like queens and people who are in her court, the, the high-level politicians, will look at what life was like for ordinary people as well. So their experience of education, what they did for fun, things like theatre, and we'll look at how the world was widening in the Elizabethan period. So people were discovering more of the world. Boats were able to sail further and discover parts of the Americas that no one really uh, had, had found before and started to exploit those places and, and think about setting up colonies. All of the GCSC is examined by uh, an end of year assessment, uh, three exam papers. Uh, there's no coursework at all in GCSC history. So it is quite challenging and you need to think quite seriously if you're going to choose GCSE history that there is lots of reading and writing and th that is how the course is going to be examined. So think seriously before choosing GCSE history. Um, there are some challenges but we study such a range of uh, really interesting, exciting bits of history that uh, I, I believe the challenges are completely worthwhile. The second thing to tell you about GCSE history is why is it useful? And really it's because historians build up a really wide range of skills. The first thing they learn to do is to handle huge amounts of information, uh, they study complex events, and they're able to select information from that to make uh, a really clear, organised um, explanation of why things have happened. So we talk about causation, why did things happen, and we talk about consequence. Um, what impact did that have? Why did it really matter? The second thing is they, they use evidence, a really wide range of evidence, and they, they really question that evidence. They think about, well, what, what argument does this support? Um, can I trust it? Uh, what is this really useful for telling me about? So they become critical thinkers. They're constantly questioning, how can I believe this? What other evidence is there that might disagree with this? Historians also become excellent communicators. So they learn to take big, complex events and communicate them simply and clearly so that people can follow and understand them. History is a big, complex, messy chain of events and it's important that we learn to break those events down into something concise and clear so that we can really get a handle on, on them and understand them. And finally, historians become really skilled at seeing the big picture. They can look back in time and join the dots to see, well, how did we get to where we are? And in an unpredictable world where it's very unclear what's going to be happening, quite often the past is the best guide that we have. It helps us to solve lots of the problems we might have today by understanding how did those problems arise and therefore we're much better equipped to be able to solve those problems. The final thing I want to talk to you about is why does history matter today? Well, in today's world, it's, you, you will know that it's completely unpredictable. It's very difficult for us to know what's going to happen. And it's difficult to know who to believe sometimes. Well, historians learn how to handle lots of conflicting pieces of in, uh, information. They think about where that information has come from, and they're excellent at just digging deeper into it and thinking, well, who should I trust? Why should I trust this person? Ultimately, what they're looking for is to arrive at the truth, which today matters more than ever. If you have any further questions about studying GCSE history, then the best person to talk to is your class teacher or to come and find me, Mr Carr, in the history department, usually on the third floor, um, but otherwise at the end of a history lesson, uh, just ask your teacher to explain a bit more about GCSE history and they'll be happy to explain more.